how often have you been engaged with an Arminian, a Pelagian, a free will theist, a phony Calvinist, and you're explaining to them that God decrees whatsoever comes to pass, and that of course includes evil. And the pretty the, the, the pretty much the standard response to that is are you telling me that God decreed child rape? This was brought out beautifully in uh, the debate between uh, James White and uh, George Bryson on Hank Handicap's radio program, The Bible Answer Man. Uh, Bryson was uh, continually, consistently, constantly appealing to child rape. Child rape. And... Um, uh, you know, and James White, I, I, I believe, did a, did a uh, fine job of, of dealing with that. But this is a common tactic, a common argument that comes from that side. Now, let me give you, I'll give you a couple more examples. Uh, there's a, 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 a lady, Juliet, um, on YouTube. I, her YouTube channel is, I forget, starts with an S. Anyway, she said this on her blog. She uh, no longer wants to go by the title Calvinist and because she says this. She says, no, God is not the author of evil. If he were, he would be the devil, wouldn't he? God is love, pure love. And while he is also perfectly just, it does not give him pleasure to have little children raped, nor does he plan for that. Now, of course, the caricature is thrown out there of... Um, suggesting that us Calvinists believe that God gets pleasure out of decreeing child rape. Of course, that's just not true. No Calvinist believes that. The Bible doesn't teach that. But the point is, is she, when responding to the idea of God decreeing whatsoever comes to pass, said that uh, she brought up child rape and says, no, that God doesn't plan for that or decree it, predetermine it. Okay, now let's go to one more example. Uh, a gentleman that I know on Facebook said this. He says, It does seem curious that if what is meant by choose is do as you are caused to do, the writers of that Bible would have just said that. But then again, the God who thrusts pedophiles' fingers into little girls wouldn't have an issue with deceit either, would he? Now, here's the main point that I want to bring out is that when the Calvinist affirms that God decrees whatsoever comes to pass, and that includes all acts of evil, and yes, that includes rape, child molestation, the standard response from the opposite, the non-reformed, non-Calvinist, fake Calvinist crowd, is to think of the worst, most heinous sin that, that their minds can even conceive of, and they think of child rape. God would never decree rape. Are you telling me that God decreed the rape of that little boy? Now, this tells you a lot about how they view sin, if you will. That is, when they think of the worst possible scenario, the worst possible sin, they come up with child rape. But I can think of a worse sin than that. How about the murder of the sinless Son of God. How about that sin? As a matter of fact, the murder of Christ makes child rape pale by comparison. It, it, the murder of the Son of God almost makes pedophilia and child rape look good by comparison. But of course, the Arminians and that, that crowd out there, no, no, the murder of Christ isn't that wicked. It's not that evil because I can think of something worse, child rape. What does that tell you how they value the life of Christ, the sin that was committed there? They don't because that's never the first thing on their list. But the fact remains that... Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4 both tell us that the murder of Christ, which is infinitely more evil than child rape, 
was predetermined and decreed by God. So if God can and does decree or predetermine the murder of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the most heinous sin ever committed, why is decreeing or predetermining child rape so bad? I mean, relatively speaking. I mean, that's, that's nothing compared to the murder of Christ. And then, of course, just one last side note. Not that I'm informing you guys of anything new, especially the Calvinist, but the Armenians, the Pelagians, and, and that crowd understand that when they appeal to such an argument, they're appealing to your emotions. That is, when, two, when a Calvinist and a non-Calvinist are debating, they want to use child rape because they know that gets people's emotions going. And if they can get you to think emotionally, that is the audience that's listening to this, if they can get the audience to think emotionally rather than exegetically or theologically, then they, are, are, they can quite often dupe people into believing their lies and their false theology. But emotionalism should never be used. It's a false hermeneutic. But yet, that's the standard M.O. of the non-reformed crowd. All right, folks. Peace.